I welcome you to our financial seminar on techniques for charitable giving and online contributions. Our presenters today are Don Reeder and Larry Knoll. Don is a tax and estate lawyer, and Larry is an elder here at Westside and chair of our stewardship committee. For those who are watching live right now, please know there'll be an opportunity to submit any questions that you have right in the comment section of our YouTube page and channel. I will be monitoring those questions. I now welcome Don Reeder. Good afternoon, and thank you for those of you who may be listening on YouTube. Uh, our conversation today deals with the exciting title, Tax Advantaged Charitable Giving. All kidding aside, the title and indeed perhaps a great deal of the content we will be discussing today is rather dry and not the stuff of modern spy novel plots. However, for those of you who do have intent to make charitable contributions, some of the rules and techniques we will be discussing are most important toward making those contributions more efficient and tax advantageous. I'm gonna speak for a few minutes on some general and tax rule background and then on various techniques and strategies for charitable giving. Then Larry Knoll will speak briefly about specific ways that you can make gifts of appreciated securities and IRA distributions and otherwise make contact with the church for charitable giving. There will be an opportunity for questions after we are done. Initially, it needs to be said that in order for you to be interested in what we are talking about today, there needs to be an intention to donate. This is for people who come from the point of view of wanting to share what they have, what they have made and what they have accumulated with others through charitable institutions. You will hear the term 501c3 institutions, and that refers to institutions that are qualified with the IRS to receive gifts without tax consequences and permit a deduction for them to the person making them. It is reported that Americans give some $1 billion per day to qualified charities. In recognition of this, the United States tax code codifies the importance of this giving and provides a variety of tax incentives to support those who wish to make donations to do good. First, I need to deal in a little bit of detail with the technical stuff that is mainly federal tax rules that govern what gifts and the limitations on them that allow for some form of favorable tax treatment. This is not to be confused with the gift tax rules which govern the extent to which we can make gifts to family members and friends. These are the rules that you will hear limit your annual deductions to $16,000 per person, to an unlimited number of persons each year, and only result in any actual gift tax due after a person has made lifetime gifts, plus has an estate after they die, which totals more than $12,060,000, assuming death in 2022. These rules govern non-charitable gifts. That's not what we're talking about. As many of you are probably aware, there were major changes in the federal income tax law in 2017. One of those changes that particularly affects taxpayers in states like New Jersey and New York was the capping of the so-called SALT deductions to a maximum of $10,000 annually. SALT refers to state and local tax deduction. This created a major change in deductions permitted on Schedule A of your Form 1040. Under the same law, the standard deduction for persons who do not itemize deductions on Schedule A was increased from a number that was about $12,000 to a number that is $25,100 for married couples filing jointly in 2021. The similar number for individual taxpayers filing was increased to $12,550 in 2021. Now, before this tax reform, approximately 30% of taxpayers itemized their deductions, but now there are less than 10% of taxpayers who do so. 
When you are able to itemize deductions on your income tax return, you can deduct cash gifts you make to charity throughout the year up to 60% of your adjusted gross income. But if you are among the millions of taxpayers who are no longer itemizing deductions, you will be missing out on any ta income tax benefit from your charitable gifts. There is understandable concern from charitable organizations in the United States that taxpayers may be less charitably inclined if they don't receive a tax benefit from their donations. Ideally, of course, taxpayers donate to charities for the purpose of assisting in helping out the, the purposes of these organizations. But most individuals also want to receive a tax benefit from their gift. Now let's look at some specific charitable giving strategies that you might consider. First, if you have enough deductions, itemize like you had been doing before the change in the tax law. Put simply, toward the end of each calendar year, add up the total of your allowable de itemized deductions, which would include up to $10,000 of the property and state local income tax that we talked about, and your other deductions, the largest of which are typically mortgage interest and medical expenses. If that number is larger than the standard deduction allowed for that year, which would be 12,550 for individuals and $25,100 number for married couples filing jointly, then you itemize on Schedule A and you get some benefit for your charitable deductions. Second technique is consider a bunching strategy. As a way to make your itemized deductions exceed the standard deduction threshold and ultimately reduce your tax bill, you might consider bunching, which is in effect concentrating your charitable giving into one taxable year. Taxpayers often bunch in this way by donating appreciated securities. This technique we'll discuss in a minute. So as an example, let's take a couple that typically give $10,000 per year to charitable causes. Their other deductions could be itemized, uh, uh, which could be itemized to total, say, $10,000, being state and local taxes. This is not more than the $25,100 standard deduction, so they would not receive any tax benefit from that $10,000 charitable gift that year. They could, however, say, make three years' worth of gifts this year, and their itemized deductions would then total $40,000, which is the $30,000 charitable donation plus the $10,000 state and local income tax deduction. Then they would not be making charitable gifts in years two and three, but would get the benefit of the full standard deduction amount for each of those years. The third uh, technique is consider establishing a donor advised fund or DAF. A donor-advised fund is itself a charitable entity, and a key benefit is its flexibility. A donor can make contributions to a DAF at any time and receive an immediate charitable deduction for the year that contribution is made. Then the donor can direct grants from their fund to a charity or variety of charities on a timetable that the donor chooses. While you decide when to make the charitable gifts from your DAF, the funds that are accumulated have the potential to grow. Any growth in the value of the assets is tax-free, possibly enabling you to give even more to the causes that you wish. As I'll discuss next, an even greater tax benefit can obtain, be obtained by funding your DAF with appreciated securities rather than cash. To use the example I recited above, the couple that wishes to give $10,000 a year could bunch their gifting by making a gift to the charity $30,000 all in one year, but might wish to spread it out over three years because that is their usual way of doing. The DAF permits this in that you contribute to the DAF the $30,000 in one year and get the tax benefit, but can then designate that the charity receives $10,000 spread over the years. Another technique is to donate appreciated stocks or bonds rather than cash. A simple 
but very powerful strategy increasing the value of your donation in your tax deduction is to donate appreciated stocks or bonds or other securities directly to your charity of choice. While donations made by cash or check are by far the most common methods of charitable giving, contributing appreciated securities is usually a more efficient technique. There are a couple of key benefits to giving appreciated assets to a charity. First, if you sell an appreciated security, you will owe capital gains on the growth. If instead you gift an appreciated security to a charitable organization, you avoid the capital gains tax, as does the charity, because charities don't pay capital gains taxes. You would be eligible for a charitable income tax deduction equal to the full fair market value of the security you donate with only a limitation of up to 30% of your adjusted gross income for any given year. So as an example, if you were one of those lucky people who purchased 100 shares of Apple stock at the initial offering price of $22, those 10 shares, those 100 shares today would be worth about, those 100 shares today would be worth about $3,300,000. If you were to give all of the, well, you aren't gonna give all of them. If you were to give $10,000 of that Apple stock to your favorite charity, you would have a $10,000 charitable income tax deduction without recognizing the approximately $9,950 of capital gain that you would have had to recognize if you had sold the share first and then made a cash contribution to the charity. At a 24% tax bracket, you have really made a gift of $10,000 that otherwise would have cost you something like $12,500. Another technique is consider a qualified charitable distribution. You know, the IRA has all these terms and initials and all this sort of stuff. It's really exciting stuff here. If you are currently taking required minimum distributions from your IRAs, Another strategy that will reduce taxable income is what is called a Qualified Charitable Distribution, or QCD. These donations are made directly from your IRA to your chosen charity. While the gift amount will not qualify for a charitable deduction, that amount will not be considered taxable income either. This deducts the amount transferred to your security from your taxable income. You don't pay tax on your IRA distribution. QCDs may be particularly appealing if you have few other itemized deductions or if you are already close to your charitable deduction limitations. QCDs count towards satisfying your required minimum distribution for the year if it has not already been met. Because the QCD is not reported as income or as a deduction, it is not counted against the charitable limits and does not require itemization to be effective. You can make a QCD once you have reached age 70 and one half, although it probably makes more sense to wait until the new RMD required date, which is 70, uh, age, which is 72. So to use an example, very simple, say a person were required to draw down a $10,000 required minimum distribution, and that person directed that $2,000 of that RMD be paid to a charity, then on the income tax return, that person would only report $8,000 of tax of taxable contributions from this retirement distribution. The last technique is a little more complicated, uh, but in implementation is very straightforward. It's a charitable remainder trust. A charitable remainder trust is a gift of cash or other property to an irrevocable trust. The irrevocable trust then generates an income stream for a term of years or for life to you as the donor or to other beneficiaries that you might name, such as family members. Then the remainder of the donated assets are distributed to the charity or charities you have named. A CRT allows you to make contributions to the trust and be eligible for an immediate partial tax deduction, which is based on the present value of the assets that will eventually go to the named charities. CRTs can be structured to defer the payment income stream and provide for income during retirement. There are basically two types of CRTs. 
charitable remainder annuity trusts distribute a fixed annuity amount each year and additional contributions are not permitted. Charitable remainder unit trusts distribute a fixed percentage based on the balance of the trust assets revalued annually and additional contributions are permitted. One technique that can provide flexibility is to couple a CRT with a donor advised fund. This way, if a donor decides to change the named charity as beneficiary, the donor can freely change that charity receiving the remainder without hassle or expense. The CRT is a good option by providing an immediate charitable deduction, but also provides an income stream to the donor or another person. If you are making a major contribution, you may wish to have your own attorney establish the appropriate documents to set this up. However, it is very common to make CRT contributions to a CRT structure which is already set up by your favorite charity. In that regard, several Westside members over the years have contributed to the CRT established under the auspices of the National Presbyterian Church. The ultimate beneficiary to be named can then be Westside. All right, for those of you who are still awake and with me, I'd like to turn things over to Larry Knoll, who will deal more specifically with how you can make contributions to this church. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Don. I'm here to help you consider the options available to contribute to your west side and invest in our missions through however you feel it, you're most comfortable. More and more people are continuing to invest through online giving. So one thing I'd like you to consider is online giving takes a very um, easy and simple approach so that you can objectively plan out your uh, giving strategy for a week, a month, a quarter, or a year. If you would consider the westside.org option, I think you'll find it be very, very helpful to consider your contributions and your investment in the West Side program that we're all invested in. So the first thing you would want to do would be to go to the westside.org page and down the bottom of the page you will see contributions and online giving options. I think a lot of people are not aware that you can give not just through a checking account, but through a credit card, through, as Don mentioned, what they call required minimum distributions, RMD. There are many options available for you to contribute to our causes at West Side. Um, you can actually give through a credit card. So if you want to uh, anticipate getting additional points through, whether it's American Express or your favorite credit card, those options are available to you through the westside.org page as well as going down and making sure that your credit card, your checking account is available to give as you so fit, see fit, excuse me. So one thing I would like you to remember is that uh, Ann Lee here has tremendous experience in uh, assisting our members in their contribution efforts. So please take down her email, which is Ann Lee at westside.org, and she will be able to help you uh, specifically for, um, as Don mentioned, stock transfers. If you have a stock uh, account with a uh, brokerage firm, we have, Westside has a brokerage firm, America Trade, which will help you set up a contribution through appreciated stocks. We use the Haggerty Group, and Ann will be able to will be able to help you uh, facilitate that uh, vehicle. Um, also, you can make IRA contributions uh, through your favorite um, and specific uh, brokerage firm with using the Haggerty Group, which will uh, Ann will be able to help you with it as well. So the most important thing, I think, is to recognize that we've increased, Westside has increased the online giving to almost 60% of our members, 
and we want you to be comfortable using the facility that we have. Um, so Anley at westside.org for stock transfers, for required minimum distribution uh, contributions, for credit card contributions, or you can go right to the website and use the prompts to have a direct contribution made from your checking account. Any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to, to contact us and we're here to help you. Thank you very much. Before we close it up, are there any questions that anyone might have that have been presented so far? Um, there being none from uh, the technical people here, I would then um, bring this uh, to a close. And thank you to those of you who have uh, listened to this. I emphasize particularly the most important part of this is what Larry has said, which is that the the giving with the techniques, the dry stuff that I've talked about, the actual giving part is, it, it sounds very intimidating, it does to me even, the, the, uh, all those techniques, but the implementation of that is really very straightforward and Westside is set up to do that and does it so that all you need to do is to say, I want to make this gift and I understand this is a way I could do it, what do I do next? You just make the contact and, and you'll be taken through it, it's very easy. If there's nothing else, I'll just bring this to a close then. Thank you all. Thank you everybody. <laughs>